Warm well, welcome to today's talk. It's a Wednesday the 9th of February and the sun's just come out, which is quite nice. Now, I've had a lot of concerned emails and letters about this article here relating to ivermectin. And this is from uh, MedPage uh, Today. Obviously, I'll give you the reference. Uh, ivermectin arm of principal trial put on hold. Now, if you haven't got time to watch this uh, whole video, um, the answer is it hasn't. Ivermectin is still in the trial. So Ivermectin is still part of the principal trial. And it's a rather curious story what's happened here. So let, let's have a look at it. Before we do that, just a bit of background. So the principal trial, and we're looking at Ivermectin particularly. Um, now, MedPage today hopefully gives some useful information from Merck, the manufacturers of ivermectin, or one of the, the, the original manufacturer anyway. It's made all over the place now in India and things. Uh, anyway, Merck helpfully tell us that um, they've concluded that the probability of ivermectin providing a potentially safe and efficacious treatment option to SARS coronavirus 2 is low. So Merck, the manufacturers, don't seem very optimistic about the potential for ivermectin. As a result, uh, they say this, and have prioritised internal efforts towards the development of alternative candidates that provide a higher probability of success for the treatment of COVID-19. Um, now, just uh, nothing to do with this, of course, but um, ivermectin is off, is off patent now. You can't make very much money out of it. It's, it's off licence, so anyone can make it. New drugs, of course, typically would have a patent of 15 years. But anyway, let's carry on with this helpful statement from Merck. If clinical data emerge providing definitive evidence for a positive benefit risk assessment of the use of ivermectin in COVID-19, we stand ready to provide our expertise and resources as needed. So just a bit of helpful background. Now, of course, this is the uh, ivermectin trial, part of the principal trial from a certain university in England called Oxford University. Now, let's just look at um, where this came from and try and work out what's going on. So this was, uh, this was the MedPage Today article, and this actually goes back to the 14th of December. Ivermectin arm of the principal study put on hold. Trial website site supply issues. Now, um, let's just see how probable that would be. Now, this is Professor Chris Butler, who's the head of the, uh, the, the um, principal trial, based in Oxford, uh, from the University of Nuff Oxford's Nuffield Department of Primary Care Health Science, Joint Chief Investigator. Now, this is from the site. Um, he says, ivermectin is readily available globally, so how could there possibly be any supply issue with it? It just doesn't make any sense. I mean, here's my, um, here's my personal supply that I got from uh, uh, suppliers. Well, this is, this is Indian ivermectin. I keep this purely for uh, educational, illustrative purposes, of course. Um, but it's there, it's readily available, it costs literally pennies, um, a few cents, a couple of, it's literally, but I think I worked it out once, the, the World Health Organization are paying about four cents a tablet, it's essentially, it's essentially free, and uh, can be produced in huge, uh, huge scales, as I say, this uh, prop here that I keep, I suppose it would be useful if it did get strongylides or um, onchocerciasis, which is what it's prescribed for uh, at the moment, agreed by the World Health Organization. But it's readily available anyway. That's the point I'm making. Uh, and uh, Chris, Chris Butler, of course, says this. Um, ivermectin is readily available globally, so there is not a supply issue with it. Um, has been in wide use, again, Chris Butler speaking, on, on the website. This is uh, directly from the website. Uh, it's been in wide use for many other infectious conditions. It's a well-known medicine with a good safety profile. Remarkably good safety profile, actually. Uh, very good safety profile. Obviously, we never prescribe on this channel. Only take drugs prescribed by our own healthcare provider. Uh, and because of the early promising results in some studies, it's already being widely used to treat COVID-19 in several countries. So that, that was sort of Chris Butler's uh, background statement there. Now, if we go back to uh, this here, so that this was the concern. And now um, it says here, Ivermectin trial in the UK principal trial is currently paused due to temporary supply issues, according to the trial website. Now, 
I, I'm somewhat mystified by this, unless it's changed or something, because you click on the website there, and that's just a direct uh, click link that we've done. Um, and we find no talk of it here on the site. This is the principal trial website, help finding treatments for COVID-19 from home, which of course is exactly what we want to do, avoid hospitalizations if at all possible. Very laudable uh, principle. Principle is a UK-wide clinical study from the University of Oxford to find COVID-19 treatments for recovery at home. And it's uh, 9,000 uh, participants have been recruited so far. Uh, this video here j just gives you some, I'm not going to play it, just gives you some useful background information on the trial itself, who can join. Uh, eligibility criteria and then tr drugs that are being uh, looked at here. So we've got for Vipavir antiviral drug and we've got Ivermectin, which are currently being studied. Now, have we missed something here from the news? So let's go into the news from the principal trial. And here we have the feature of a great success of this trial. Here they discovered that uh, asthma drug uh, bu bu budesonide, budesonide um, is useful. Uh, uh, inhaled budesonide, a common corticosteroid, is the first widely available inexpensive drug found to shorten recovery times in COVID-19 patients aged over 50 who are treated at home and in other community settings. Report to the principal trial in uh, 1,779 participants. The drug is now available to treat COVID-19 on a case-by-case -case basis in the United Kingdom uh, primary care. So, so that was good. But then we look on and we see, well, is there any, any news about ivermectin? So, well, here's their bit on ivermectin, but this bit actually hasn't been updated since the, uh, since the 23rd of June. So again, we can click on that. And we see that ivermectin to be investigated for adults 18 plus as a possible treatment for COVID-19 in the principal trial and no, no change. So it seems to be still ongoing that ivermectin is being investigated by the Oxford uh, principal trial. And again, we see nothing here of supply issues, no, no issue at all. Now, um, at the start, at the start of this talk, I, I said uh, it's still in the trial, and the reason I know that is uh, Chris Butler was kind enough to tell me that yesterday. I'm not going to say more in the email; I've got permission to release it. But he, he did tell me ivermectin is still in the trial. So where this has come from, I really don't know. Also, if we look at the uh, the registry of clinical trials here, um, we, we see principal a clinical trial evaluation and treatments for suspected and confirmed COVID-19 for recovery at home, and that is all the information there about the about the trial where it is uh, registered. So um, in interesting where this story has come from and what it means. So that's the registry, uh, International Standard Randomised Controlled Trial Number is what that stands for. Right, so, um, and, and they say here, this is a direct quote from their site, um, overall trial status ongoing, uh, recruitment status recruiting. It's just completely unambiguous. Uh, when is the study starting and how long is it expected to run for? Um, well, again, this is on the official uh, registry of the clinical trial, March uh, 2020 to September 2022. Now, disappointing that the results are going to take so uh, so long to come. And currently we're investigating these two drugs, for Vipavir and uh, Ivermectin. They're, they're the two drugs currently being uh, investigated by this trial at the moment. Now, if you put for Vipavir into the uh, British National Formula site, it doesn't actually come up because it's not really being used. I believe it's being used for certain types of influenza in Japan. But here we have the description of the influenza and the medicines that are being used. And we actually see that uh, for Vipavir is not actually being used in the United Kingdom at the moment, but plenty of other interesting things on influenza there. But it is being prescribed uh, in Japan for certain uh, criteria for people with, with, with influenza. The other drug here we see is part of the British National Formulary. British National Formula, of course, is the definitive uh, authority, really, for any drugs in the UK. So here's the ivermectin, recognised, approved drug by the British National Formulary uh, for um, this this rosa rosacea condition with redness, strongyloides, which is the uh, the worm the, the worm infection, and uh, onchocerciasis, which is the the one that causes the uh, the swelling of the uh, the lymph nodes. And scabies. Um, 
So there you go. Uh, with all use, ivermectin is unlicensed, but the drug itself is on there for British National Formula. So um, if I were to get strongylides or onchocerciasis, I've got some handy, I suppose. Um, even though mine's only for educational purposes, I think it's still in date. So, um, a bit curious, really. Uh, so, now, quite a lot of pressure's been put on Professor Butler by various groupings to, to release data early. But, of course, this is a randomised, double-blind controlled trial. So Professor Butler himself, as, as the trial organiser, doesn't know who's getting what drug. That's the whole point. He doesn't know, so it can't influence the way he influences patients, and so it can't influence the way he interprets the data. So um, it's a double-blind trial. Independent data in, <coughs> There's an independent data monitoring and safety committee as part of the trial. Um, so that's, again, normal, good practice. We'll pick up any signal for futility, superiority or safety. Again, makes perfect sense. We'll let the trial steering committee know, which Professor Butler's on the trial steering committee, I understand, so they'll let them know. And then a final analysis can be conducted following the re release uh, of results and data. So this shouldn't be any later than September. Now, frustratingly slow, of course, but strange that this story's come about saying that there were supply issues with a drug which patently there is no supply issues for it's readily available so there you go it is ongoing i think this just illustrates a lot of the um um emotion that's, that, that surrounds ivermectin and of course we have to go uh, by the science which we have done several times on this channel so there you go we look forward with great interest to the results of ivermectin for home treatment because it's cheap and readily available and has an excellent safety profile compared to many other medications we look forward to that um and the trial is ongoing so it looks like we've nothing to worry about readily available no supply issues part of the british national formula um so quite why this well, quite, quite quite where this came from um is is somewhat of a mystery so um not saying anyone was right, not saying anyone was wrong, just saying it's a bit strange. But a lot of you have written to me concerned, so hopefully that puts everyone's mind at rest that this, the ivermectin trial is ongoing under the auspices of Oxford University in the principal trial. Uh, I think we'll leave it there. Other things to say today, but we'll just, we'll just leave that there because it's quite an important message to get out, and, and thank you for watching.